Okay, I'm going to tell you about uh, genetic programming in Python. So before I start, I want to ask you if there are, if there are any hardcore creationists on this uh, in the hill, because if there are, you might find this uh, speech quite uncomfortable. But you know what you signed for. Okay, so genetic programming and genetic algorithms is, uh, mm, is a way to find a solution where uh, we don't have a uh, formula we, when we, where we can uh, check how good uh, the solution is, but we don't know how to achieve the uh, solution itself. Good example would be to design an aerodynamic shape of the wing of a plane where we have ways to simulate an airflow uh, and we can measure up how good, uh, how good aerodynamically the shape is, how good its performance is, but we don't have formula to, uh, to design the, uh, the wing itself or the shape itself and in that way the, in that case the gen genetic programming and the genetic algorithms uh, would be good idea it's basically uh, it's basically uh, tr some educated try and error uh, method of searching the solution I mean uh, you have like solution space and you made an educated guess you get first you create random uh, set of solutions and then you check how good they are and based on that you uh, make the next generation so on and so on and so on uh, until the good generation uh, the good enough solution uh, is found so it's just like the normal uh, just like the normal living organisms and normal evolution where the only the best individuals uh, of the uh, group on the genome uh, of the phenotype is uh, can pass the, their genomes to the next generation so yeah this this guy mr charles darwin uh, found out uh, and came out with uh, the theory of evolution when he was in galapago island and when uh, he observed that uh, that living organisms uh, every every generation of living organisms resembles uh, the previous the parents but they are changed in some way and usually uh, the change is for the good i mean uh, they become better and better suited to the environment and in our cases uh, it will be better and uh, better and better suited to the uh, s uh, better, better and better suited solution for a problem uh, yeah that's the main uh, that's the main maybe rule of evolution survival the fittest as cruel as it might seem uh, this is how it works so the uh, the worst uh, individuals are simply eliminated uh, from the population so only the best ones can breed and can create the next generation and therefore the next generation will be or should be better than the previous and usually it works that way and that way they evolve and they become more and more fitted to the uh, to the solution they uh, are faced to the problem they are faced with. In that case, that will be uh, which one is faster and which one will fit uh, will fit on the uh, the ladder. And as we can see, the right uh, organisms is quite it's much more fitted to the environment. It's uh, it bec it comes to be. So we need several things uh, to create good uh, evolutionary to, to create evolution first one is a population in genetic algorithms and genetic uh, programming uh, the population will be usually a random set of something that may or may not resemble uh, the solution we are looking for uh, 
but they has uh, has ability to breed and has ability to evolve and generally they can be uh, measure up how fit they are to the uh, problem i mean uh, i'll show it later but uh, for genetic programming to be like random programs that, that does something we don't know yet what they do but later and later they will become more and more fitted to the problem uh, as i said it's usually random mm, as it was random in real life but it w uh, it was like long long time before and uh, it's usually just random Maybe uh, w w maybe with a bit of tweaks, but that really depends on the problem. Uh, second thing we need is a um, fitness function. What is fitness function? F uh, it's a method to check how good the solution is. In our case, as the uh, on the photo, it which ones uh, runs faster. That will be the fitness function, the speed of running, and maybe the cleverness of the uh, escape route. But, uh, well, the slower will either be hungry or be eaten, so the sl slower one uh, here will be eliminated. And only the better will, will survive and be able to breed to create next generation. Uh, to create next generation. And hopefully the next generation will be f even faster because uh, only the fastest will create them. And it, it works that way. And the third thing we need is a breeding method. Uh, okay, uh, it's a breeding method. Not everything can breed. For genetic programming and genetic algorithms, uh, we, general, uh, we generally need uh, we need to breed and to uh, cross uh, to create crossovers uh, between sol um, solutions we are uh, we are making. I mean, um, so uh, so we can just. Uh, we can get the best individuals and create new ones based on uh, on the ones we have. So how do we do it in programming and algorithmic uh, algorithmics? Well, we can evolve data structures. So that is uh, that this is one of the most important thing in generalistic algorithms to develop the data structure that can could be evolved uh, our solu we need to model model up our solutions in a way which allows to be uh, evolved and to be crossed over between between them uh, for example here's one dimensional uh, list of integers uh, what we want to create to make is a well, Fibonacci string that was our fitness function and the similarity of the uh, similarity of the uh, Fibonacci sequence would be the fitness function itself. So when we cr when we get the when we, when we get the best how we get the best uh, individuals is to is that we measure up how similar uh, they are to the actual uh, Fibonacci sequence. Of course, it's not a very good idea to use uh, genetic programming to create Fibonacci sequence because we know how to create it and we don't need that uh, technique which, is, which, ha which has its disadvantages. But in that case, we wanted to use it and after some uh, some time of uh, several generations, we came out with two st two different uh, data structures, two different uh, lists that uh, together combined can create a Fibonacci sequence. So that's how we uh, how we breed them. That's how we make scores over them uh, between them. And um, well. At the, uh, as you can see, at the end, it's uh, it's unlikely that we get uh, that kind of uh, that simple data structures, but it it is possible. And at the end, we have like 
good Fibonacci sequence. Uh, there are the, uh, there are between be, be beside uh, crossovers, uh, we need another form of changing the uh, each generation. I mean, there's no uh, as you can see, when we have like big gene pool. Uh, of thousands of uh, individuals because that that's usually how it works uh, there there are no guarantees oh and they're all random uh, there are no guarantees that we will find a solution every part of solution uh, out there i mean uh, there are no guarantees that the uh, numbers of Fibonacci sequence will be out there in the initial population, so we need another thing, uh, and that's uh, that is mutation. Usually, it's uh, there are two ways of uh, of changing between mm, end generation, and uh, each uh, each is uh, chance based, and there is a chance that uh, every that a number will just mutate and will place another random number on its place, and usually the chance should be very low, and the crossovers between. So that's how genetic algorithms work, but genetic programming is something a bit different. I mean, we don't create a data structure, we create programs out there. So we need to find a way to create random programs and mutate those programs cross over between them and uh, well that's not that trivial so we need to uh, model up a program to be a data structure and programs are trees generally if some of you worked with uh, function based uh, programming uh, uh, programming language like lisp it should be pretty clear for you that every program can be written that way it can be written as a tree of even binary tree of functions like plus and terminals like 3 or 80 uh, because uh, well every function gets an argument and we can make an argument uh, one function can be argument to another and that way we create programs so as i said the lisp is built that way so uh, it gets a bit to get uh, used to but generally it works that way and we can put and variables out there i mean for example, uh, the terminal doesn't necessarily need to be set uh, set up. It can be variable and can be passed out passed uh, in by. You can pass in, passed uh, into program by the um, the external set of rules. Uh, so we can create uh, we can create programs that accepts uh, input and produces output, and it will be uh, displayed as tree. And that way, um, when we have that data structure, mo uh, we can create, uh, we can breed, uh, oh. uh, we can breed between them, we, we can create crossovers. And the next thing we need is a fitness function, which, uh, which, uh, which, which is our problem we want to, be, uh, we want to solve. In our case, in this example, fitness function will be a simple, uh, simple equation. We want to create a program that will uh, produce, uh, that will return the, uh, f the result of that function. We, we, uh, we for a given x, we want y. Okay, so let's assume we created a random population of two, po two po programs. As you can see, it's not very random, but it usually it, it, it should be random and the, there's, there shouldn't be two programs but like 2,000. But let's say we have like this population and we want to achieve the, uh, want to create this, that function. Uh, so we have everything here. We have uh, multiplication, we have uh, adding, we have power and to create, but none of this will will produce the uh, result we want. We want. So we create crossover. As you can, 
As you can see, we took that, that part from the first one and just this from the latter, I think. Oh. And that way we created the completely, a complete program that uh, will produce the result we want. This, uh, if you look closer, this is the function we want. It's uh, uh, 3x plus 30 plus uh, x power 2. So from the two random programs, we created third, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so PyEvolve is a framework for that uh, in written in Python. It's not very well uh, maintained. Uh, it's not very well maintained. Like like update was in 2006, I think, and for uh, or 2010, and Python uh, 2.6. But it's easy. But it is possible and quite easy to install it on Python 2.7. Uh, you can download it from that side. There is a documentation, quite quite good, well written documentation out there, and well, for sure it's written by the uh, by the mathematicians. So well, you see. Okay, I've created a simple. Uh, I've created a simple. Uh, Problem. I mean, the genetic algorithm um, to create data structure. In that case, will be, it will be our uh, it will be the equation we looked upon uh, before. And as you can see, the fitness function measures up uh, the differential between the actual fun result and the uh, and think what the and the chromosome which is uh, the well chromosome will be our list and the list and the def, uh, and the actual function and in that way in that case uh, we want to be to different to this differential to be as low as possible we want to be exactly the same and uh, well that's the, that I think the, the uh, Fitness function is, our, uh, is uh, the most important, f the most important thing of all genetic programming and genetic algorithm. It's where we define our problem to be solved. So we have this fitness function, and we have a genome. Genome is an initial popula population, and basically every population, but in that case, it's initial population, which is a uh, one-dimensional list of 10 elements uh, and uh, with this line the PyEvolve creates a random list that will be evolved from uh, every, um, every, let, every later uh, gener uh, Generation will be evolved from this initial list, which, as you can, as we'll see later, uh, is doesn't resemble anything like the uh, solution we want. But it will be base uh, from which will evolve our solution. And next line is uh, well, we set our evaluation function, with our, or uh, fitness function in other uh, in, uh, literature. And uh, we say by this line, it's quite self-explanatory. We we tell the PyEvolve that we want this to be our fitness function, and we want uh, use this to check how uh, how the genome performs. Initializator is. Uh, uh, well, here we at least here we create. We tell the uh, we tell the uh, PyEvolve what this list should be filled uh, with. In our case, it's uh, integer. Uh, there are quite some uh, some quite quite a lot of uh, initializers, and it's pretty easy to write your own. I mean, there are uh, besides the one-dimensional list that. Uh, you can think of a lot of other data structures that might fit your uh, solutions better than list. 
it's quite easy to be, uh, to build your own your own genome, your own uh, initializer, and basically everything out here. Uh, mutator is, as I told you before, is a second way to uh, second second way to mm, change the uh, generation between generations, and by mutator we set up uh, we tell how how it should mutate. As I said, there's no guarantee the, uh, that every every result we need it will be in initial genome so we need to put uh, some form of uh, some chance of changing the initial uh, population and that's the mutator okay so that's the the heart of thing let's create a genome this is like uh, factory and we tell it to to be uh, 1,000 generations. There are basically two forms of uh, ending the, evo uh, the evolution process. We want either to be to fix, we, we have either fixed number of generations, like we want best thing that comes after 1,000 generations. That's it. Whatever it would be, we want it. And that's what we use, uh, use it here. The second form, uh, I think it's better, but uh, that depends on the problem. Is we want uh, one solution that uh, meets the criteria or the fitness we want. I mean, we put a threshold and we said, okay, that fitness is satisfaction. We want that one, and uh, just end it. Uh, end end it when we w you find an individual that meets that criteria. Uh, but here I've set a uh, 1,000 generations. So next line is uh, set minimax. Uh, here we simply define whether or not we want fitness function to be either as big as possible or as low as possible. Because fitness score uh, is, in our case, is a difference between the solution, the actual solution, and the uh, solution we produce, we want the difference to be as low as possible, so we set minimax to minimal, minimize. And let's evolve it. Let's put all everything mm, into motion. Just, to, just let it print uh, statistics every 10 generations. And then let's print the best individual. Let's print uh, whatever comes out of it. Okay, so this is what uh, what it produces. Uh, it's every it's uh, a bit trimmed off, but it's basically um, every tenth generation uh, in two hundred generations altogether. With a bit uh, a bit short, uh, of tweaks. Okay, so this is the uh, the best individual of first first initial genome first initial population. As you can see, it doesn't, doesn't look like what we want. The last one is exactly what we want. And, uh, well, one number meets the other. Okay, that's good enough, but it's uh, one list out of uh, 2,000 uh, lists in the uh, first initial population. But then we start to mutate it. As you can see, the tenth generation, which is here, looks much more like the uh, like the result we want. The second and the third number is the same, and the last one is the same. So basically, here you can observe how it change over uh, the generations, and it becomes more and more uh, similar to the result to the result itself. The result itself was. Exact after about 200 generations was exactly what we want. What we wanted exactly the uh, it was the exactly exact data structure we are we was comparing to. So the in that case, the genetic genetic algorithm met its uh, requirements perfectly. But that's a one-dimensional list. I wanted to tell you about programming, so genetic programs. And PyEvolve uh, gives an 
gives a uh, framework to create genetic programs as well. That's a bit, so to create genetic program, we need to, as you, as you remember from the tree, um, there are functions that will be, uh, that, w that we can, we will be pr uh, making uh, our tree from. In our case, it's we want four, four different functions, which is add, uh, just adding, adding, uh, and so on, so on, so on. And basically, that's everything we need. Even more than we need to to create the functions we want, because there are no uh, no sub, but. Okay, we create. We didn't know that. Knew that. That so we create that four different functions, which uh, will build our tree from. Uh, this is our ev our evaluation function or a fitness function. Okay, so the chromosome is uh, as before. It is the function. Uh, it is the individual we are checking now. That's a global uh, error accuming that in our case is uh, just uh, data structure from um, data structure from PyEvolve where when we where we create uh, when we store every error and every and basically the fitness call and yeah so here code comp uh, let's initialize it and here this uh, we get the compiled uh, code. So our uh, PyEvolve created a function and it made a code of Python in Python. It doesn't look very well, but as you can s as you'll see later, but basically here we have a uh, Python code made from the functions above. And what we want to check is uh, for every uh, for every number of from zero to, to twenty nine, the case, we'll see what's the correct result of that function. I mean, this other this is other quadratum uh, equation. I've changed the last uh, element, so we won't need to. Uh, we, we the terminals will be uh, significantly smaller. We and this is our function. And this is. This is a score uh, we produce. Uh, we simply evaluated the code. Uh, we, we, si uh, we simply put an eval into our code, which be a code string, normal uh, eval function, and then we check the uh, error. In our case, it's uh, something like this. We put a correct and the score into a data structure uh, and then return mm, the uh, error, the fitness, fitness, uh, the fitness score. The uh, PyEvolve uh, calculates an error a bit differently than simply adding the differential because it should be a bit more sophisticated because uh, we can get a big differential between functions even if the functions itself only, uh, the function itself is quite similar, just the, uh, just the last number changes a lot, so there are better ways to create. A, there are much better ways to create an evaluation score. And this is a, this is a heart of thing of genetic programming. So let's create a genome. Genome uh, in our case it will be a genetic programming tree, so because as I said, the every program can be written as tree. So here, and the uh, tree is uh, a sub, mm, and so the program is just a subset, a subset uh, of, of tree, which is uh, that description in, uh, in, in PyEvolve. Okay, so let's set parameters, max depth, because we don't want our trees to be like 1,000 uh, nodes uh, deep, because then the evaluation process will take even longer. I mean, it is very computationally heavy. Even so even uh, even as simple as that, it's very computationally heavy because that code so 1,000 generations and 1,000 population size. 
So about one million uh, evaluations uh, took me about 20 minutes to run, even with uh, only five, uh, w with depth only by uh, set, of set to five. Methods. Uh, there are quite some methods to uh, there are quite some methods to cross over and so on. So uh, we set us around, but we it, it, this is most basic. Uh, I suggest you to read about uh, other methods, but uh, in our case we use it this one. So okay, let's set our evaluation function. Uh, gen let's create a genome. Terminals. Terminals are the uh, are the leaves of the tree. I mean, as you can see before in evaluation function, we, uh, the x is the name of the variable we pass on. Pass on. Uh, so we want terminals to be x. In that in uh, PyEvolve, it's uh, set up a string because it will be joined with uh, the rest of the function and when we put an evo uh, it will be filled with the uh, with the value we pass on and the other uh, num we want just numbers uh, sorry in the rest of the uh, on the rest of the leaves so in sum it will be like x and and six different numbers which is every which is everything we need to the uh, for the function and GP uh, function prefix. Uh, as you see here, we uh, named our functions as GP uh, underscore something. Uh, so we just set up prefix and the PyEvolve uh, will scan a namespace for every function st which name start from GP and it will uh, consider it as a uh, branch of a tree. Uh, it's very, very, it speeds up uh, generations, uh, it speeds up uh, configuration a lot. Okay, so set minimax. Again, we want the differential to be as low as possible, so uh, we set this up minimize. Generations, we want, again, a thousand generations. Mm. We want a thousand generations. Mm. Usually it takes less, I mean, it took less than uh, that, and then thousand uh, to get the perfect result, but I set a thousand. Mutation rate is a chance that uh, the, uh, the branch or the leaf will change itself to the random, uh, random value, as I said. Uh, and uh, crossover rate is a chance that uh, the branch will May be passed from one tree to another between generations, and the cr usually the crossover rate should be uh, higher uh, than muta mutation rate. We want more co crossovers than mutates, mutations. And the popula initial population is, uh, is again is 1,000, and let's evolve it. So, okay, as I said, it took about roughly 20 minutes to finish it uh, to finish it up. And this is what came out. This is, uh, as you can see, Python code. A bit, uh, well, uh, it's uh, it's often very, very, uh, it's often very um, pointless. I mean, multiplication by zero. Here we multiply by zero, and then we multiply by zero again, and then we mu multiply by zero again. Uh, so, bas but basically, mm, I don't want to debug it because it looks ter horrible. Uh, be aware, uh, be advised because if you create something like this and uh, tag it as, uh, into as your code, you might be you might be cursed by developers. But so always tell that it was genetically created. But basically, uh, it will produce. It will be exactly the function we want. Uh, as I said, I just don't. Here's two x. Here's three. Uh, we set we said three x. So two x plus one x and plus power uh, x plus uh, power two, and that should I think create uh, give a uh, one. 
I hope, I don't know. I mean, but I've, che I've uh, checked this code uh, and it produces the exactly results of the, uh, the exactly results of the, uh, the function we want. Okay, so now I want to tell you about some real life uh, examples of, pi of genetic programming and, use and uses of genetic algorithms. This one is uh, antenna. NASA uh, create an antenna for a specific uh, for a deep space uh, I think probe or something like this I don't know exactly but this antenna was created by using genetic uh, algorithm uh, algorithms and evolves as you can see it's quite strange I mean I don't know how about you I wouldn't think about uh, that kind of uh, shape but as it turned out it outperformed everything the engineers uh, created so it's it surely looks strange, but it's good. It's uh, very the performance of this antenna is very good. There are other antennas as well, uh, different than this, but uh, also evolved. It was like four different uh, arms, and you can look uh, you can check it out. Check it out. It's uh, it's strange, but it works much better than the human pr human created uh, anten antennas. Evolisa, that's something uh, very interesting. I'm working on right now on something uh, similar. It's uh, create evolving the Mona Lisa from the finite number of polygons uh, with uh, when you have random color, random uh, shape of the polygons, random placement and alpha. And as you can see, it evolves into quite a good Mona Lisa. The fitness function will be uh, will be the difference b between uh, actual Mona Lisa and the uh, and the image we created. And as you can see, the last one is quite quite uh, quite similar. I mean, it's ama uh, it's quite amazing that it's created it's created by program oh, uh, purely. And the last thing, that's a very interesting thing. I hope to f uh, yeah play it. This is a video uh, back in 1994. The genetic programs or algorithms created um, some sort of living organisms that were that was to. There were quite some fitness functions. In that in that case, they sh they was to swim, and as you can see, some of them looks like their actual. Uh, the looks like the creatures that actually exist. But there are quite some other ideas, like this one, <laughs> or this one. <laughs> now it's it's about walking. Okay, well, nothing like this evolved in the real world, but uh, but as you can see, it can walk, more or less. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've seen other uh, video like from uh, like this, but with a lot of more po uh, polygons and a lot more figures. But uh, as I said, it's it was created. This one is created in 1994, so over t over 10 years ago. So oh, what I said, 16 years ago, even 18. And uh, well, the computational power back then was significantly less than now. So now we could we can create it uh, something more uh, advanced. Here uh, the uh, here the creature, let's call it creature, uh, is is to uh, follow the red dot. As you can see, uh, as unlikely as it might seem, they can turn and they can swim in the direction we want. And even they can interact with the uh, with the uh, environment. Oh, now the, now the uh, this is interesting. I mean, the fitness func nothing. Uh, the fitness function can be either function itself or it, uh, it can uh, it can be. Um, 
well, the creatures can simply compete uh, in some uh, in something. In that case, they has to land as close as the uh, as the green uh, square as possible. So and competing uh, competing is uh, one uh, one way to find it uh, to find the fitness. As you can see, the ideas are quite different. One is covering the green uh, the green uh, polygon. The others are simply fall onto it. As you can see, that that's one is a bit tricky. It's simply still <laughs> Yeah. The two, it's often the, the uh, form of creature often depends on uh, on the op opponent that it's faced uh, with. This one simply ignores the that and pushes the uh, other creatures away. That's that's all it wants. So the strong, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It simply walks away. <laughs> As you can see, there are quite different, f uh, quite a different uh, solutions for this problem. I mean, the problem itself is quite simple: land, uh, g uh, get to the green square as close as possible. But the solutions are, qu are different. So that's it. And oh, any questions? What is your personal experience working with this kind of uh, algorithms? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm still learning them. I am working, as I, as I said, with the image. Uh, a bit, uh, I'm working with a bit with the image uh, manipulation. Uh, I like Evoliza, and I'd like to, if I have, uh, if I'd say if, uh, that I have ever, uh, some significant results because I don't have it. But it gets better, and well, it's uh, as you can see, the uh, that kind of te the techniques isn't very uh, widely used. I mean, it's for very very specific uh, problems, and in my professional life, I haven't been faced with the problem that requires genetic programming. But it's good to know that there is so such a such solution. Thank you for your talk. Uh, you showed an example where you constructed uh, an expression from uh, GP add, GP move functions, and uh, can you have controlled structures there? Like uh, loops, if conditions? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, all the, uh, the the uh, the pi evolved actually don't care what's inside the function. I mean, it should produce a result and it should accept an. Uh, Set of, a set of parameters, and what would be the parameters, and what will be the res result? It's completely up to you. I mean, you can put an even uh, I don't know HTTP request inside, and uh, it will work. But uh, you must, uh, you must. Uh, from my experience, you should you should keep that functions that uh, uh, elementary functions as simple as possible because the more uh, the more you gave into it, the more uh, the less uh, will be evolved. Mm -hmm. So you can put it a anything, but it should be as simple as possible. It should be just blocks that will cons that will ultimately construct the uh, solution you want. Thank you. Thank you. So. Thank you for your talk. And uh, a question about Paeval. Mm -hmm. Does it uh, give you some parallel experience uh, in uh, computations, uh, like um, dividing the task on three, ten, yeah. or a cluster? Yes. I mean, I haven't tried it, but um, uh, um, it, it's, uh, I'm sure it supports multiprocessing, so the several uh, cores in the processor. And I don't know how about uh, using a, how about uh, using a cluster, but I'm quite sure it could be done uh, 
well, we could use uh, PyEvolve only to evolve some sort of results, and then uh, after several generations, for example, compa uh, combine the results from different clusters. I mean, I haven't tried, and I don't know if PyEvolve uh, gives that kind of parallelization. Uh, to be honest, I doubt, I doubt, doubt it that it does. I'm sure about uh, several cores, but not with not the different machines. And uh, alternatives to PyEvo, did uh, you see any? In Python, no. Unfortunately, no. I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't know if Python ex uh, is uh, Python is good way, to good good language to experiment with it. But I think the uh, if you will be faced with real case. It should it should be written in something faster than Python, like C. Uh, PyEvolve is written in purely in Python, so uh, it could use that we could send. It could be written in C, uh, but it's good. It's very easy to uh, learn about all whole thing and experiment. And for the uh, well, for uh, but uh, for the experimentation will be great and. Generally, the genetic algorithms should be one-time use. I mean, you don't uh, design the wing uh, every day. You design one wing, and you d generally don't care if it will take one day of computation or five days of computation, uh, unless uh, you want the wing, and you want the wing in infinite time. Uh, in infinite time. Uh, I've heard that in some universities that they say that it could be used for uh, like like uh, mm, solving the traveling salesman uh, problem but i don't think it's a very good idea it's very it's very good where you don't know how to achieve the result but uh, when you do know how to achieve the when you don't know how to achieve the result the result usually don't uh, need to be ad hoc as I said, this simple code took me about 20 minutes on quite fast computer to run, so uh, it's very, very heavy computationally.